Thanks for locking in with 77 Flavors of Chicago. We're your host, Dario. And I'm Sarah, and I hope you're ready to learn with us. Today, we're talking about Daniel Burnham. OG from the OG, triple OG. I feel like that should have been like, welcome to WBEZ yeah. After Dark. Yeah. <laughs> That's what that music is giving, you know yeah, what I mean? It is giving off those, uh, those, uh, yeah, yeah, it, oh, late night WTCI. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Here, here, here Campbell's dog, here. That dog is like, hey. Campbell's on the podcast today. Fuck y'all podcast. Damn. <laughs> uh, but first, <laughs> did you know that Daniel Burnham actually lived in uh, Evanston? Mm. Yeah. Our arch nemesis. No, I'm just playing. No, 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 no. <laughs> um, but uh, yeah, we'll get into all that later, tell you some details. But yeah. what's going on? What's cracking, good people? What's up? How y'all doing? Give the people a minute to respond. Yeah, yeah, right. Okay, good. Minute. Wow, that's so interesting. That I'm is. so happy you said that. I'm happy for y'all. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they probably like cut off. Yeah, they're like, shut <laughs> So what's going on? What's up with uh, what happened this week in uh, 77 Flavor What Lane? happened this week? We're, our schedule is starting to get uh, a little hectic. A little hectic because a lot is a lot of events start happening. <laughs> you know, we just be... <laughs> we just you get said, invited to you, things. You said, uh, flex. <laughs> no, um, no, it ain't no flex. We ain't doing that. They ain't, they ain't that It's style. not a flex. It's not a flex. It's just an opportunity. It's, yeah. Yeah, we we happy. Yeah, we get to make content and not get paid. So it's a great opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> I'm saying, I'm saying. Damn. I'm just joking. Damn, man, I'm just joking, it you guys. It. <laughs> um, well, I don't know. Nothing really crazy happened this week, I feel like. Nothing uh, happened. We just did. We did. You know, we did a ton of events. Uh, a couple of restaurant open. Restaurants open. Some bakeries yeah. open. If you follow us on Instagram, you probably like, you probably know saw this shit this. already. Um, but we're yeah. I got something cool. What? What y'all don't know that we didn't post on social media is so I uh, was out doing meeting a client for a job in April. Right? He's going to do a uh, pro- what? Mm. what? Are you going to name the person? No, I'm not going to do. I'm oh, not okay. going to do that. Okay. Uh, going to do. Um, you, I'm like, she's shaking her head. Y'all probably like, what's going on? She's like, don't say it. And I'm like, no, I know how to privacy. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. Um, but my client is uh, doing a proposal, right? Mm-hmm. So we went and met to kind of plan it out. Where am I going to stand? What's going to happen? Mm-hmm. You know, how can I be incognito right yeah. in plain sight? So that's what it was for, right? And uh, as I, you know, as, you know, we start talking, I'm looking at Buddy and I'm like, I know you from somewhere. Y'all, long story short, <laughs> he tells me who he is. And pretty, uh, the, the, the. I feel like this should have been a story for April 17th after the thing happens. So yeah, yeah, well, tell well us who it I'm is just saying what my cool. week was. I'm just oh, saying yeah. what my week was. This, that yeah. was part of my week. That was, it was dope. It's legendary. So he's, he's part of a, uh, he's a relative of a very he's legendary a, he's a person. Legendary Nepo baby. Yeah. No, he, I don't think he Nepo. For, I mean, I don't think so. He was really cool. He might be. I don't know. But uh, he do things for the shorties. It's, it's actually really cool. I can't wait yeah. to like actually tell y'all. If you follow, you'll see pictures. But um, yeah, so that was uh, really that was my cool. week. Yeah, yeah really I, I actually had a. It was cold as shit though, y'all. When I when I tell you your boy's fingers, I know fake spring was over. Man, look, I, so I had to I had to do for the shot. So I didn't even tell you this. So like, I'm I'm after we all done, he walk away. I see another photographer who's doing the exact same thing. But it was happening that day, mm. and in my head, I'm like, "Bro, y- y- they are pro- he is proposing to his girl, and got y'all out here, and it is cold as shit, y'all." I mean, it's hard to predict that. It mm-hmm. is hard to predict. Don't propose in February, I mean, right? That's what I'm about to say. You by the lake, by the river, you know what I mean? So anyway, y'all, I'm I'm talking to him. My hands are freezing, but I saw this uh, sculpture, and I was like, "I got to get a picture." Of this. A little swirly. I had to get a picture of it. So what I did was, <laughs> I had to put the f- camera down. And when I tell you my fingers was about to freeze off, I was about to drop that camera. I had to sit it on this little thing with uh, it's like a pillar that uh, you press a button and the handicap thing open up. Very small that yeah, I've I had know. a huge camera sitting on, Ooh. just so I can like kind of warm up my hands. But it was either that or I'm gone. My my fingers gonna fucking fall yeah. off. So I start start talking to buddy ass. And he he getting his shot prepped and everything. I managed to change lenses. Fingertips frozen. I can't feel shit at this point. I I can't feel. It nothing. was very cold. It was cold. I put it on there. I got the shot. Long story short, y'all can see the picture on my uh, I be snapping page. But to get that picture, it took a lot. It took a lot. Yeah. Because then I had to walk back to the train station. Good thing it wasn't far. It wasn't far at all going back to the train station. And um, yeah, I finally got. I warmed up when I got back to the second leg of the train mm. uh, of my journey back home. I was like, bro, this is. I don't know why I did this. Even the client was cold as shit. Yeah. 
I was like, well, you shouldn't agree to uh, come with me out here when I came up with that goofy ass idea in February. Damn. <laughs> well, it was Michael Jordan's birthday though, so it was. Yeah, that was that felt good to kind of do it on his birthday. I, I braved it. What it does was that like have to game. do with his birthday? It flew game because that's oh. probably what I'm gonna have. Damn. <laughs> I'm good, y'all. <coughs> no, I'm just playing. Uh-huh. I'm just playing. No, no, I'm, I'm good. Uh, you ready to start talking about this uh, this little dude? <laughs> This little dude. You can't be going through disrespecting history like that. Yeah. <laughs> Partner. All right. Daniel Burnham, y'all. Uh, y'all probably know him. He legendary Maybe architect. they don't. Well, if you don't, then you, what, you, what's going on here? But if you don't know, he was the guy that came up with the 1909 plan of Chicago. Mm-hmm. Uh, and the plan was to make it look like Paris, kind of. Yeah. Uh, fun fact about us, we actually have that book. Shout out, do. To, yeah, shout out to the uh, architecture, architecture center, center, yeah, for uh, letting us letting us get one of those. No, no, no swipe one. Yeah, you know, what I'm saying? you know, what I'm saying? We stole it. Well, read the whole thing front to back too, so it got good use. Not just not just sitting on the kitchen on, on the table. It's a coffee table book. It is very. It's but, large. It is. You know what? It's one of those books that if you are, you know, you come over to the crib, you probably won't be like, damn. If you're yeah. a Chicagoan, if you're a Chicagoan, you got to be so, like. We have so many Chicago themed books that people give us. We do. Like, holy shit. I keep switching out those coffee table books because we have so many. I yeah. did a story one time on our Instagram page and I went through all of like what is on our coffee table and like how, what it looks and like this all the Chicago This would be a good reel books. for this week. Um, That's playing to Chicago. Mm, That'd be a good reel. Mm-hmm. We, we'll talk about that. We'll uh, offline. <laughs> um, but yeah. anyway, Daniel Burnham, that's who he is. Let's talk about this episode. We want to kind of find out a little bit more about him aside from, you know, his Chicago happenings. So yeah. uh, let's start at the top. He was born 1846 in Henderson, New York. Uh, he then moved to Chicago with his family. His family moved to Chicago. Yeah. And, he, you know, as a, as a part of that, he came, he became like a salesperson. Right. Yeah, he did a bunch of odds and ends. He did. He uh, he actually wanted to go. He applied to Yale and Harvard. He did not get into either. So if you didn't get to y- into Yale or Harvard, don't feel bad because neither right. did Daniel Burnham. Yeah, right. <laughs> um, and he went on to do great things. But uh, he worked as like a salesperson. He worked. He did a bunch of little things. Mm-hmm. But he always liked art. He always yeah. liked to draw. And so. Uh, he just was like, I'm going to be an architect. Yeah. And that's after he moved to Nevada. Yeah. He left and he came moved, back. Yeah. He moved to Nevada uh, and tried to be part of the state legislature Correct. down there. Yep. And that, that didn't work out. <laughs> so no. then, <clears throat> but Artists, he came back. I feel like as an artist, it's really hard to work in something that is not creatively inducing. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. you don't get the opportunity to be creative. It's it's like crippling to your soul. Yeah. Now here's, here's something that you need to think about, y'all. Like think about the timeline of him being an architect. So he he was born forty six, and he came back and worked for um, William LeBaron Jenny, who mm-hmm. he, huge architect. Also, right, he uh, was a landscape architect. Also, yeah, it's very very. Check out the Humble Park episode and mm-hmm. a couple other things we talked mm-hmm. about. Um, but uh, so he worked with him in nineteen sixty eight. That's Twenty two years after he was yeah. born, and it barely worked for him. And he right, he barely he was like kind of like a secretary. Not, not nothing wrong with that, y'all. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but like he wasn't working as an architect, right? Yeah. He decided, hey, I kind of like this in seventy two. So you know, four uh, what four years later, so dude was twenty six when he finally decided, <clears throat> excuse me, that he wanted to be an architect. Yeah, that's crazy. That is absolutely is crazy. crazy. So he he actually uh, that's when he started working with uh, John Root. We talked about yep. that. Go look at the Monadnock building. It's almost like the fire happened for him to be able to find his career because like had the point. had the building boom not happened and after the fire, yeah, he probably might have never really gotten into it. But mm-hmm. yeah, I you mean, know what? That, that coin. I just gave you a coin because that was a good coin. Who are we talking to that said I don't press the buttons enough anymore? Remember? No. We were talking, they were like, hey, you don't press the buttons enough. I don't remember. Oh, I think it was my buddy, uh, Jose. Well, here you go, Jose. Here's here's a button. I wasn't there. Yep, here's this one more coin okay, for you. All right, all there's right. another coin for you. Okay. And one more, one more. No, you no, can no, only do the three. That's enough. Okay. That was five, like five. Okay, sorry, y'all. <laughs> sorry, sorry. Had to do that. Uh, but anyway, yeah, so so he that, that was kind of like how he got started with mm-hmm. um, architecture. Yeah. Now, here's the thing. He lived, you know, when he was kind of in the prime of that. Uh, he lived in 
on Michigan Avenue. Yeah. And, uh, you know. Him and Baldwin. Root, I mean, if you don't know, literally just look up Burnham and Root yeah. and look at the buildings that they've done. I mean, we've Legendary. covered the Monod Knock and that was like one of their buildings. There's so many yeah. the skyscrapers and like they really were... They would have won. The originators of like the Chicago School of Architecture yeah. type thing. Yeah, they really, they they really were. Yeah. Um, now, when he moved to um, Evanston, how do we get here to Evanston? And we'll, mm. we'll we'll make this transition. Fun fact: He actually married one of his clients' daughters. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> He yeah. married. You talk about keeping a business, you know, in the family. Right. He he he, he married her, and then they they had five shorties. Right. And then uh, went to Evanston. His kids and him was kind of like, man, we can't move too far from Chicago because we love yeah. Chicago that much. Right. He wanted to be close. He wanted to be close. And Evanston, he thought was. Uh, was one of the yeah. what, most beautiful places. He said it's one of the most beautiful cities in the world. And he bought like literally two blocks, two <laughs> blocks of land. Uh, it's balling on a different level right there. The, the, house, <laughs> <laughs> the house that they lived on was already there. So he did not build. It was like an Italian style house. Um, it was on the property already, but it was f- almost like forests all around it mm-hmm. leading to Lake Michigan, to the beach, right? Yeah. So that was p- all part of his property. That's nuts. Um, and it was called Lincoln Place, mm-hmm. but it's now called Burnham Place. Yeah. Um, and you can even, if you go to that beach, it's so the address was 232 Dempster Street mm-hmm. is like where the home was. Yep. It's no longer there because after he died, his his two sons inherited the land and they like divided up divided it amongst themselves yeah. um and they demoed it in uh, they, 38 yeah, they they destroyed the house but um they what was i gonna say you said they were they bought the house the, the land but um they demoed it in, in right so <clears throat> I, I was gonna say the end of dempster mm-hmm. is like his land went all the way to the end of dempster if you're familiar with that area and to all the way to the beach and yeah. that was like has to be because of the pier really right it turned right. into a yeah. pier yeah, yeah. which is which, which is, is no longer there right it's kind of like the over in santa monica california <laughs> that's, yeah, that's so what that reminds but me. i mean it wasn't as like fun the one on santa monica has like shops and stuff right. this is like right. a like the piers you see in chicago on right. the lake like right. it's just you walk to the end of it yeah There's nothing there yeah um but uh yeah so you know he set up his shop out there and um uh, now the reason why we're talking about like this and like who he was it is kind of significant in how he actually helped shape evanston to what it is right, right? and had a lot of influence mm-hmm. to the point and here's another fun fact for y'all uh, we told you at the top about the uh, 1909 plan of Chicago where, you know, he wanted to kind of build Chicago to make it look like Paris. Yeah. But did y'all know, did y'all know he also worked uh, to plan for San Francisco and D.C., yeah, Washington, D.C., y'all? That's nuts. He worked on the plan for those cities. Yeah. And um, so West Coast, East Coast, y'all welcome. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> y'all welcome. Y'all yeah. look like I'm in Chicago. Yeah. You know? <laughs> but you they, know. it's, well, here's the thing. I've never been to D.C., but you, I've seen the, the plan and the layout. Mm-hmm. Um, it doesn't that look kind of like the plan of Chicago, the OG around the uh, the White House? Right. How it, the Pennsylvania Avenue, where yeah. it's like a half oval uh, mm-hmm. circle, and then the, the that's it's, what. It's also like Paris. Right. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. What Chicago wanted to be like. Yeah. That's I just thought about it right now. Mm-hmm. That's that's mind blowing. Yeah. Why I wonder if that's the case. We it's have possible. to we have to check that out. Yeah. I, I hate the fact that I just found that like thought about that the, on the podcast. The thought just came to your yeah, mind. yeah. Right now I'm not editing this shit out. Yeah, <laughs> we you got to follow me for later or, or yeah. look it up yourself. But that is pretty interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that was uh, that's pretty cool. Uh, fun fact and. Uh, he had a he had a he had a guy that he uh, became great friends with that helped him get yeah, this. Yeah, uh, he he actually was. So the house that they lived on was in was huge. It was two floors and sixteen rooms. Mm. It was very large. The only thing on the property that Burnham himself actually built is the tea house, mm. which was like behind them. But they, they had a lot of parties, right. so they had people over all the time. All kinds of like artists and politicians and like famous people came through the house. And there's a ton of pictures uh, at this place that we went to right. called the Dawes uh, House, which Charles is Dawes. Charles Dawes, which is now the Evanston Historical Society mm. or center, I mean, um, which used to be Charles Dawes's house. It's just a couple blocks from Burnham's home. Yeah. And Charles Dawes um, 
and Daniel Burnham were friends. Who is Charles Dawes? Charles Dawes, uh, he is a lot of things. Yeah. <laughs> One of the the most f- famous things, he was the vice president. But Calvin Coolidge, y'all. Yeah. <laughs> yes, nuts. He was a composer. Yes. Uh, music. He was great at music, he was apparently. self-taught yes. and really good at music. Um, he was, I mean, he did a ton of yeah. stuff. Like, my God. I won a Nobel Peace Prize. He won a Nobel Peace Prize. Once or twice, I think. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Um, and he was one of the people that backed Burnham's um what when like obviously Burnham died before Evans like the plan of Evanston was done in 1917 yeah. but he was one of the people that kind of like backed him up when it came to that they were very good friends and if you go to da- Charles Dawes house today which is again the Evanston Historical Center um it is you can learn about Burnham a little bit they have a whole like archival room that you can uh Visit the house is absolutely beautiful. Man, this house is nuts, y'all. And first of all, I I don't think y'all understood. It went over y'all head, and I'm not saying y'all <laughs> y'all ain't get it, but you ain't get it. This was the house of a former vice president. You yeah. can just walk in, y'all. Yeah. Like like you. Can... And it's an absolutely beautiful house. If you want to yes. see some pictures, obviously you can look at their website. But I'm gonna post some on our stories today. Uh, so if you're listening on Monday, you can go in there and check them out. It is. An insane home. Insane. It's like all this dark, like cherry. Oh, wood. It's, it's yeah. cherry uh, stained as mahogany, I believe yeah. is what they said. It is like. Gorgeous. Like like, like dark, romantic, kind of like, you know, giving very, that gothic vibe. Very I don't know, opulent really looking beautiful. house. Really I'm, beautiful. Yes. I mean, and here's the really cool thing about this is almost, I, I don't know. I don't want to put a percentage on it, but I, but I will. Uh, probably like <laughs> 70 to 80 percent. Of the stuff that's in there is original, if not more, if not more, yeah, original, y'all. Yeah. Like they just have like down to the plates. And if if it's not original, it's like identical replicas. Yes, and they have archived things in yeah. there. They have actual pictures of Calvin yeah. Coolidge and his wife. Also, Crazy. a really cool thing, um, which is wild. I don't know how we don't know more about this. I, like I, that's, I'm glad we did this episode mm-hmm. because. They have a seat in the chair where they think he might have died right. watching a football game. Uh, I think it was. He's like, oh, Bob, uh, like wrestling? A wrestling or wrestling, something. It was yeah. wrestling. Yeah. Watching a fight or something like that. And because they had TV. That's crazy. Um, he was rich. It was but, still black and white. Yeah. Right. But like he might have died in that chair. In that chair. And they, they, they can't verify, but they think it is. And it's yeah. roughed off. You can't see it. I'm telling you, man, like that. It's it's like stepping into a time capsule. It's it like is. so beautifully preserved. Yes. And they have the tours are like ten dollars, by the way. Nothing. And they do them at one, two and th- and four o'clock mm-hmm. or one, two and three o'clock, something at like four, that. Four. Um and I the tour is an hour. I one thousand percent think it's worth it. Like yeah. if you are even interested in um remotely interested in this topic, go visit that house. It yeah. is so cool. The docent that gave us the tour was Amazing, like amazing, amazing. It was just Dario and I. Like that, yeah. it was just the two of us in the tour. There was no one else because and nobody really is. I don't think you you think about it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like this is we, these these house museums are so cool to me. They are the probably better than the reason why I say here's here's before I finish this. Yeah, <laughs> it's cooler because these are authentic things inside of a house where somebody actually lived. A lot of times that shit is inside a museum. You can't even get close to it. Yeah, but you just and you can't like vi- maybe you can't visualize how it was used when you yeah. look at it in a museum, right? Like, even when you see like um, clothes in a museum, right? Yeah. Like a historical garments or something like that. Okay, cool. But like if I see it hung up in a closet in a home, right. it's like mind blowing to me. That like, yeah. it looks like the family just stepped away for a minute and we're like walking around their house. We just in there. Like and it's so cool. It's staged to be that way, the yeah. same way like the Glessner house yeah. was. And they even have pictures. Um, in the different rooms mm-hmm. of what that room looked like. So dude was flipping through. Yeah. The docent was flipping through the book in the very first room we went into. Yeah. He was flipping through like a photo album of what it used to look like. Yeah. And you could look over and be like, damn, that's that right there. Yeah. And you, it's it's just amazing. Even the, um, it's not wallpaper. He described it as this like linone, lino, linoleum. Linoleum. I don't, can't pronounce it. That's like, drawn on it that like literally if a match light you light a match it, the whole thing sets on fire but like it's that and it's all original like it's yeah. all so there it's so crazy yeah, this, there's yeah. a, a Dawes received a gift from the White House when he retired <laughs> right. and it's a silver tray with the signatures of like a bunch a of bunch senators of people, yeah. and stuff like that 
it is just such a cool experience. Nuts. Nuts. Like, and, and you could touch it. And you can touch it. <laughs> yeah. t- it was like, so I asked dude, I was like, so this came from the White House. He's yeah. like, yeah. I was like, Get, it's what? It's great. Like, it's so, so cool. And um, the archives were closed that day, but uh, shout out to Chris because she took us downstairs <laughs> to on, the archives. On. We got to give a proper shout out. <laughs> Um, she she took us down to the archives and uh, she told she's like the Daniel Burnham expert yeah uh, and th- she gives walking tours in the neighborhood of yep. all the uh, structures that Daniel Burnham built because he did build a lot in Evanston mm-hmm. so like there's churches there's a school there's a lot of stuff that he did build so she does give that walking tour um, and so she took us down to the archives and showed us some stuff from uh, the exhibit that they once had about Daniel Burnham yeah and um, she also was telling us how the so around his property Mm -hmm. was a wall that is that he built Mm -hmm. once Sheridan Road was being expanded towards the lake and um that wall is like one of the few things that he did build on the property and um she she told us a little anecdote about how he actually wanted Sheridan Road to be built. A mm-hmm. lot of people say that he like stopped the expansion, but he he wanted it. He, he was on the board. It. He was on the yeah, he wanted it <laughs> to happen. Uh so I just thought that was like really cool. There's two uh pieces of like rock like stumps right. uh, that are on the driveway of a random, uh, what appears to be a random home, right. but that is actually the entrance of the driveway to what was Burnham's house. Nuts. Absolutely nuts. <laughs> like it's just, and all of the, the entire area is an Evanston landmark. So yeah. like the right. whole area, every house you pass by, obviously you can't go into people's they homes. They got little markings on mm-hmm. it. They have a marker that says like the green ones we have in Chicago, they're the same thing. Yeah. And it just says uh, Evanston, like uh, city of Evanston landmark. Yeah. And, it's just so cool to see. And the beach right there is absolutely beautiful. There's a yeah. huge park that you can like walk yeah, around. I don't know. It's absolutely not. Now, here's a, about that that beach and park. Uh, so here's the last thing that I'll say. But uh, So after you exit, the behind the uh, Dawes residence, mm-hmm. uh, his house also <laughs> went, yeah. to the, went to the, uh, the, the lake. Yeah, right. And so in order, you know, for Evanston to expand, he wanted it to expand. Right. And so what he did was he donated um he cut off his land Mm -hmm. from the river to um where sheridan road is now and and from that point on is his property but he cut all that off so that they could build that and expand more and in his honor what they did was they named that section now that, Dawes. that like park. That Dawes Park. Dawes Park. There you go. Which is really, he also donated his home. He wanted it to be a museum. He donated his home to Northwestern. And well, that's that's a story in itself. Yeah, right there. and then oh, just briefly, Northwestern then uh, couldn't keep up keep the house. It was like they, they didn't know, they didn't really want to preserve it or any, not that put they, the money. They didn't want to put, put invest into the preservation of the home. So they then sold it for one dollar to what's now the uh, Evanston Historic Society. Or Man, something. I. I that would have been. I, keep society, so. I wish. I wish we had a dollar. You know what I mean? Like, I mean, they they offered <laughs> but, it to us, but you would have to like preserve it. Well, I mean, which is become, like millions of become dollars. a five hundred one c three, and then we know what that's. You know, you know what I mean? <laughs> that, like, Whatever. you would have, you would have, you would have got it. But uh, Daniel Burnham, ladies and gentlemen, uh, pretty fun Very story. Cool. Stuff cool that you story. don't hear typically yeah. about uh, this guy, but. We just um, wanted to give. We talked a lot about like his career in Chicago, so we wanted to kind of give like a yeah. the the per, personal life Wikipedia section. I'm just playing. It's not not required <laughs> for much no, no. Wikipedia. You, if you want to learn more about his life in Evanston, uh, visit the the historical center. You can learn more about him. You can take the walking tours. They will tell you more about his life than we did here because the walking tour, I believe, is an hour. Yeah. Um, but check out also if you want to see inside the home and you want to see the parks, check out our YouTube yes. uh, video because that'll be up today on Monday, also. And um, right. Oscar, we, it, Oscar Meyer is from Evanston. Oscar Meyer is from Evanston. There's we learned Crush. about a lot of the Orange Crush yeah. had a plant in Evanston. Like yeah, it, it's just so much. I yeah. honestly never thought <laughs> of like what are the things that are who in thinks that. of Evanston other than Northwestern. Like, like that's I'm not no slight to no slight to Everson or Northwestern or shit. Northwestern. You know what I'm saying? But it's just like you don't it's just, we it's Chicago, man. Like yeah. Chicago is going, you know. But God, it's, just, it's it's honestly like there's so much history in yeah. the entire state of Illinois. Like I we can't even begin to describe. So I'm so glad we were able to like go up and learn a little bit more about this one yes. extra yes. little piece of Chicago's of Chicago best history. brand ambassadors. Ugh. Uh, my okay, go crazy. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Give me that coin. Um, anyway, 
Uh, I'm done. Okay. Well, <laughs> uh, if you enjoyed this episode, please share it with someone you love. That is the best way to support us. Send it to your people. If you did not enjoy your this people. episode, is it because it's Evanston? That's fine. Uh, <laughs> we'll be back in Chicago next week, probably. Probably. Maybe. I don't know. <laughs> maybe. I don't know. Maybe we'll be in Joliet again. And uh, <laughs> they got some, we, we got a lot to talk about listen, Joliet. And really? We really do. But we're not going back. <laughs> yeah. No, we would. Maybe. Someday. Anyway. All right. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening to today's episode and we hope you loved it. And if you could please follow us on social media at 77 Flavor Shy on Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, and Twitter. If you have any ideas or deep dives that you'd love us to do, please contact us at media at 77 flavors shy that's the number 77 flavors and shy for chicago.com if you like visuals please subscribe and follow and watch us on our youtube channel at the same thing 77 flavors shy or search 77 flavors of chicago if you would like to support us monetarily go ahead and click that bus sprout link in the description of this episode and as always We gon' see you next week. Peace.